I live in Bath, Maine, where Navy Aegis destroyers are built. These ships are outfitted with so-called missile defense systems that the Pentagon is today using to help surround Russia and China. Few people in my community, including some activists, are interested in where these ships actually go, places like Jeju Island in South Korea, where they're uh, going to be ported. It's not popular to raise these questions, especially when Bath Ironworks is the largest industrial employer in our state. In fact, today, weapons are the number one industrial export product of the United States. What does it say about the soul of our nation when we have to keep selling weapons and killing people in order to provide jobs? The manhunt for the Boston Marathon bombing suspects offered the public a window into the stunning militarization of our nation. During that incident, the entire domestic surveillance military response system was field tested and culminated in the dramatic closing down of an entire urban center. We have become an occupied nation. For the past 30 years, police departments throughout the United States have benefited from the government's largesse in the form of military weaponry and training. By making a few subtle changes to the regulation in the U.S. Code, the military has quietly granted itself the ability to police the streets without obtaining prior local or state consent, upending a precedent that has been in place for more than two centuries. The most objectionable aspect of the regulatory change is the inclusion of vague language that permits military intervention in the event of civil disturbances. Obama has announced that 30,000 drones will be flying around the U.S. in the coming years. 37 states have applied to host one of six military drone test sites planned across the country. Much debate has begun in local communities about whether police should be required to have warrants before they can snoop on us with drones. Should domestic drones be allowed to carry weapons? More than 500 aerospace companies are eager to develop this new drone market across the U.S. The drone industry lawyers say, we have nothing to fear. All we have to do is ask local police and they will be transparent about their drone use. Infrared and radio band sensors used by the military can peer through clouds and foliage and even detect and hear people inside their homes. During the last few years of U.S. military occupation in Iraq, drones monitored Baghdad 24-7 turning the entire city into the equivalent of a convenience store crammed full of security cameras. This technology is being brought home to control us. Today, drones buzzing over Afghanistan, Pakistan, or Mali are flown by pilots back in the U.S. at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada or Hancock Field in New York. This is possible because military satellites in orbit link the pilot to the drone in real time, split-second time. Space command downlink ground stations spread around the globe help relay those signals. The Pentagon brags that this high-tech warfare increases the kill chain. Hmm. In a way, you can call the military satellites the triggers that make the drones work. These satellites allow the military to see everything, to hear everything, and to target every place on the planet. In June 2012, the second flight of the new military space plane touched down at Vandenberg after 469 days in orbit. This unmanned super drone is a first strike attack system, part of the global strike doctrine now underway at the Strategic Command. 
It's going to be the successor to the shuttle that has been retired, you'll, you'll uh, remember, and was paraded through the streets of Los Angeles in late 2012. 400 trees were cut down to prepare the shuttle's red carpeted path to a waiting museum. It's the perfect symbol of our worship of the gods of metal. In the U.S. today, 57% of every federal discretionary tax dollar goes to the Pentagon to fund the cancerous war machine. Our communities have become addicted to military spending. There is virtually no money for anything else as we witness austerity cuts in social programs. In Colorado Springs, Colorado, headquarters of the Air Force Space Command. They have 357,000 people living there. 47% of that population works for the military industrial complex. The aerospace and military production industry in Alabama is a major job provider as well. In Huntsville, Alabama, they now call themselves the Pentagon of the South. In 1950, the U.S. Army moved former Nazi Werner von Braun and his team of 100 German rocket science scientists to Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville to create the U.S. space program. Von Braun and his team took over NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center and helped to ensure that the civilian space program came under military control. The Nazi rocket team brought culture to Huntsville by creating the local symphony and the ballet and lived on a hill overlooking the town. Was there an ideological contamination that came along with these Nazi scientists? One can easily note the similarity between the Nazi slogan Deutschland über alles and the Space Command logo that reads Master of Space. An activist friend in Halifax, Nova Scotia is now organizing weekly protest outside a shipyard in her community that has begun building expensive new warships for the Canadian Navy. The funding of warship building has necessitated cuts in human needs programs. Progressive political parties are going along with this largest military appropriation in Canada's history because of the jobs issue. The ships will be used by NATO, an expanding NATO, to control the Meltic Arctic region on behalf of big oil. The Pentagon says that our role in the U.S., under corporate globalization of the world economy will be security export. Thus, we won't have conventional jobs making products useful to our communities. Instead, we'll build weapons for endless wars and send our kids overseas to die for the oil corporations. A couple of years ago, I heard that the local Sears department store had a new kids clothing line, so I went to see it in a nearby town. Military uniforms for the young boys were on the clothing racks. The message, this is all you can ever be. It's youth mind colonization. The military industrial complex has become the primary resource extraction service for corporate globalization and is preparing the future generations for their dead end street. In the US, approximately 40% of all scientists, engineers, and technical professionals currently work for the military. And th this is a colossal waste of talent and intellectual resources as we face the coming reality of climate change. Due to the fiscal crisis across the nation, engineering, computer science, mathematics, astronomy, and chemistry departments in local colleges and universities have become increasingly dependent on Pentagon funding. At the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, they, they now have top secret areas on campus. The Defense Alliance in St. Paul, Minnesota, seeks to expand the weapons industry's presence in higher education. 
The Navy recently granted the University of Minnesota's Center for Transportation Studies $150,000 so they could look into improving tracking, surveillance, and intelligence communication systems. In 2011, the University of Minnesota reported that the Pentagon was trying to restrict the open publishing of research resulting from military-funded projects. This indicates quite clearly that the Pentagon is not really interested in trying to further the state of education, but instead views the students and the faculty as nothing more than military production workers doing classified work. The militarization of everything around us is a spiritual sickness. Lakota holy man, lame deer, talked about the green frog skin, the dollar bill, and how the white man was blinded by his love for the paper money. His spiritual connection to the Mother Earth was broken. Abolitionist Frederick Douglass reminded us that power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. When it comes to our current dark, evil economic system called militarism, we should be talking about its conversion and the jobs that would result from that transformation. Good, good jobs can be created by home weatherization, building rail systems, creating a solar society, and hiring unemployed workers to plant town and city organic gardens so we can feed each other. As we transform our industrial base, we lessen the impact of the military machine on our lives and help deal with our major environmental crisis. There is no other way to pay for such a redirection without massive cuts in the war machine budget now.